Hello and welcome to the Ohio Motor Speedway just outside Columbus where we're about to bear witness to the TM Master Cup Series returning to its roots. Short track racing in the Midwest. This track, which is under half a mile long, is the smallest on the circuit and we've seen a lot of very strange things happen in the past. Things like Packer Carroll's surprise win in a rain out last year, Darren Cardell winning in 2013 or even before that race started when Dale Roswell won the pole for that race. Or even Michael Sykes' first win here back in 2011. Makes you wonder, what wild and crazy things are we about to see today? Because of the rather cramped paddock, not all of the teams are overly excited to be here. However, there has been a lot of investment into this track by the Bum and Beaver Brewery, whose logos you can see everywhere. Alan Hodges, who last year sparked some controversy by calling this track a mud pit, now says that this track is 200% better in the garage than it was last year. And that's how you can tell there is a lot of very serious support not just in the state, but for this venue. The race promoter asked that 45 cars take the start today, and on a track this small, that could get very crowded very quickly. So let's meet them and run through the starting grid. For the third year in a row, Adrian Devereaux leads the field to the green. This year, he's in the Michelin Sun 74 car. Kurt Pliskin on the outside of the front row in a white car. Saul Fischel won in a TM Lights car here last year and won earlier in the year at Carbondale. David Krikorian flanks him on the outside. Cameron Taylor, local favorite in car seven, and Arto Kekkonen's won here before twice. Alessandro Rossini and Tom Moore in row four. Uh, ever since Moore's been full-time, he has never qualified lower than 17th here. Scott Bates and Darian Gilliam making his second career start in row five. Clayton Hardy, also a great effort from him, and Kenny Mide, another local driver. Local crowd's got a lot to root for, and Christina O'Ryan in car number 80 has a lot of local support here as well. You have Jenny Kuznetsov on her outside. Richard Scott in a Tenere this week, and Truman Ellison in row number 8. Excellent qualifying effort from Ellison. Castaneda and Pirapira in row number 9. Row 10, Luciano Savarol and Gaspar de Souza. Greg Woodard and Zelda Ashby in row number 11. Woodard has always gone well here in the past. Row 12, Liv Eklund made three qualifying attempts, went slower each time, and Timothy Ruiz again in an orange car. Lonnie Rollins, car 980, and Daniel Lechleiter, who won earlier in the year at Wales. Ryan Matthews and Lucas Grabert's times uh, were so equal that they had to use their second fastest laps to determine the, uh, the order there. Packer Carroll won here last year, and Tony Long in row 15. Joe Olenek has a lot of support here as well in car 23, and Irish driver Hunt on his outside. Daniel Sharp making his second career start alongside Ike Durbin. Tony Durbin and Ian Cooper both looking for more. Hopefully they have more in race trim. Row 19, Connor Friel in car 68, and Carter Fitzgerald in car number 60. Anthony Griffith makes his return, the veteran in car number 07 for Team Thunder, and Chuck Johnson in car 32. Chris Davenport and Ingrid Haddle and times are both disallowed after qualifying for technical infractions. Cars 87, 25, and 81 were all set where all their times were disallowed on sporting terms because after Gaspar D'Souza did his in-lap, uh, the DeGarmo Enterprises team sent out Craig Yonser too early, nearly caused an accident. Brandon LaRoe then returned the favor to Zach Webster, uh, which caused a lot of drama there and some scuffles in the pits. And that's for all their times were disallowed and they were not allowed to return to the track. That was a very, very ugly pit lane brawl on Friday. It's a little unclear as to whether or not any fines are going to be handed out for this brawl, as opposed to the one that happened between Lynx Racing and Richter Motorsport at Zanarkand last week. The main difference being that last week we had a brawl in a live pit lane, whereas this one happened in the garage area, so we may see uh, significantly less severe fines as a result. But that's not the only bit of intrigue involving officiating recently. There was a follow-up hearing about the results of the round of Minnesota, and as it stands, the appeals by Black Diamond Racing and Lennard International will stand. We can't directly quote Alan Hodges' response because of the number of expletives in it. Carl Walter called it one of the biggest disgraces in Master Cup history. TM Master Cup Series race director Ryan Reinhardt has stated that he wants this investigation to be over as soon as possible, and that he hopes that they can move forward without any further issues. Adrian Devereaux, acting in his capacity as chairman of the Drivers' Union, said that this ruling impacts the faith the drivers have on race control to do their jobs properly. There are only two full-time drivers on the tour who are not in the Drivers' Union, Saul Fischel and Tony Durbin. In better news, TM Master Cup Series Chief Executive Terry Schaffner is at the track today, and this is the first time he has been at a Master Cup Series race in two years after he has had a series of health issues that have kept him away from being at every race. The only thing that he said to me was that he was happy to be back.
And with that being said, it's now time to go racing. Adrian Devereaux in the yellow and black 74 car on the inside. Kurt Pliskin in the white and red 16 on the outside, leading the field of 45 to the green. And there we go, late green flag. Good start by the inside line there. Taylor and Fischl both got off the line very well. But Adrian Devereaux coming into turn two is going to hold off a challenge by Pliskin. And the Frenchman is going to sweep into the lead early. And he's already beginning to pull an advantage here. Pliskin is able to clear Fischl coming off turn four. Uh, the two veterans now one and two as you got to look at the entire field there. We get another good look at them as you see Fischl now trying to hold off David Kerkorian. But Adrian Devereaux, the veteran from France, beginning to lead and stretch his advantage already. Cameron Taylor, one of the local favorites here in car number seven, challenging Saul Fischl, who also got a very warm reception here. Fischl, uh, he has, there's quite a few Saul Fischl flags around here, and he does have a fan base here in Ohio, surprisingly. David Krikorian in car number 13 sliding back into the hands of Alessandro Rossini. Those cars who started on the inside line are going to have a huge advantage in the opening laps. They're, and we should see some of them absolutely fly through the field. Uh, as Taylor now challenging Fischl. And he's going to sweep around the 8 it looks like. Uh, now Fischl's going to make his life a little difficult. But uh, Fisch, uh, maybe not. Fischl's going to give him all the space. And uh, uh, Taylor going to sweep into third already and this is going to be a good race today from the Ohio and if this keeps up and here is Clayton Hardy in car number 31 all already up to eighth and he's garnering some interest from other teams on the grid because Arasaka his sponsor has been looking around to place him in another team because Hardy is only on a couple race deal with this Hatchet racing team so uh, it could be interesting to see him show up in another car later on in the season, possibly much sooner than we expect. Um, and I should add that his sponsor's looking at putting him in a faster car. And speaking of fast cars, here's one being driven by Darian Gilliam on the inside of Christino Ryan. They had that uh, great battle last time out, and he's running now in 10th. Uh, of course, he ran 18th in the TM Lights race on Saturday. And uh, Double Duty definitely paying off, of course. Double Duty is not possible for full-time TM Master Cup Series regulars. They are not allowed to run in the TM Lights under any circumstances. Uh, but Gilliam making the most of that, and he's running uh, up in another point-scoring position. Here's Richard Scott in the number 92 car. That's an Independence Trophy car. He is running the Tenere this week because this is Tenere's home race. They still have the Gessler that was lent to them by Lynx Racing, or I should say that they bought from Lynx Racing because Nyatsov and Moore get crossed up. Here comes Daniel Sharp in the 24 on the inside. And oh, you can tell these are, there's a lot of experienced drivers around there. Moore and Kuznetsov avoided a collision there, or avoided a serious one. And Daniel Sharp in the 24 car, not a very experienced guy, went way on the inside. And then there's Tony Durbin and Connor Friel back there joining this battle. But uh, Scott having a pretty good run so far and uh, a good heads up driving. This is what can win Scott the Independence Trophy if he gets a good enough finish today. Is Adrian Devereaux really beginning to stretch his advantage over Cameron Taylor? And then there is Kurt Pliskin who has fallen back to third and is now in the clutches of Saul Fischl. Uh, Devereaux really beginning to stretch his lead, and there's the back of the pack. So you get a good look at how much ground Devereaux needs to make up just to start lapping cars, and we're on lap 15. Here's Packer Carroll in car number 71, the winner here last year in a rain-shortened race. Uh, I should point out that even though he threw the dice on strategy that day, uh, he had genuine top three pace all race long. So um, almost certainly a podium was going to be the, uh, a result for Packer Carroll, but taking the win really meant a lot to him. And uh, he's really bringing that today because his race pace looks pretty good, even though he quali even though his qualifying effort uh, was rather surprising. He quali did not qualify very well. He's running in 29th, though. Here's Kenny Myatt in the 70, who uh, started on the outside lane, and he hasn't really been able to get to the bottom and has been going backwards ever since the drop of the green flag. And that is Chris Davenport. You just saw it go by him. He's now being scored in 24th. So that should tell you something that Davenport has come all the way from, like, 41st and is uh, now up in the point scoring positions. And here is Devereaux catching the tail enders. As so oh, we got one slow. That is Lucas Grabert in the 34 because uh, he can't have any nice things apparently lately. Uh, as uh, Cameron Taylor now made a bit of ground up on Devereaux because he was uh, had to check up a bit for the 34 coming in. And that looked very sudden. So I believe Grabert had a puncture or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Lucas Grabber has not had any luck since the Qualtum joined on as a sponsor, but um, sponsor, team, and driver look to be in good spirits. Uh, Grabber's going to be able to rejoin the race. Uh, however, he's going to go several laps down as Devereaux and uh, Taylor put a lap on Tim Ruiz in the 33. Now, there's going to be some additional sponsorship, we understand, heading to the uh, 33 car. 
Uh, so that should be quite interesting to see uh, Tim Ruiz getting Anheuser Racing get some additional sponsorship so that they can uh, hopefully work their way through the field and become one of the faster teams out there. Uh, here is Brandon Laroe in the 25 car, uh, moving out of the way of Devereaux. Uh, Laroe got uh, moved out of the way just when he got, uh, Devereaux got there. He wasn't entitled to do that because uh, he was trying to stay in the lead lap as Ingrid Hadland has had a multitude of difficulties fighting her way through traffic. And uh, I think uh, no, nothing really says that uh, uh, Lynx Racing's had a lot of difficulties here more than they just don't seem to be able to carve their way through traffic as they have been in most other races this year, as Devereaux really getting held up there by Daniel Lechleiter. Um, I don't think he's going to be overly happy about that, but I think he's just going to have to live with it because this is on a, this is a track where traffic management is key, and Lechleiter is trying to stay in the lead lap, and if there's a yellow that comes out right now, then that's going to put Lechleiter essentially back in the race. Now here is Chrissy O'Ryan running up in 16th place, trying to hold off Lonnie Rollins and Ryan Matthews. Uh, she was very well received in driver introductions as well. She has a lot of local fans here. And uh, Chrissy O'Ryan, uh, very much a diversity advocate among, in the paddock. And of course, Lynx Racing is a natural home for her. Lynx Racing has done a great job at uh, actually practicing what they preach on both sides of the pit wall, uh, both in the in the cockpit and on, the, on their engineering staff. Uh, Liv Eklund in car number 11 was almost part of that before she was called up into this car uh, preseason. Uh, it's working out quite well so far, but uh, as has been her thing lately, Eklund has worn a pride flag like a cape during driver introductions, and uh, it definitely is quite the sight, I'll tell you that much. Uh, trying to hold off reigning champion Arto Kakinen, and uh, it's uh, actually rather surprising that Eklund is doing as well as she is today because this was her worst race by far in the TM Lights last year, where she really struggled with managing traffic and got battered around quite a bit. Now here is Kurt Pliskin in the 16, uh, holding off Luciano Savaral, or rather trying to, as the Brazilian goes by. Zach Webster in the 87 car nearly up into the wall. Pliskin making room for, uh, for uh, Hunt on the inside, even though Hunt is a lap down. There's Gilliam coming up behind him. Pliskin now in seventh. He's about to lose that to Gilliam, who is having a, who is having a really good race in that 35 car. Uh, Pliskin, oh, almost into the back of the 42. They had a bail to the uh, the outside here. Is here is Alessandro Rossini having a pretty good race now. This is a man who's had an absolutely terrible season by his standards because he was contending for the championship the last two seasons. But uh, to see him this far back is rather surprising now, especially given how well he's been, uh, how well he's been running the last five years. Former Coriella Grand Prix winner. Here is Cameron Taylor trying to challenge Adrian Devereaux for the lead. They finally dislodged Lechleiter. That's Myatt in the 70 in the way. Oh, maybe a little contact there, but Devereaux definitely saw uh, Cameron Taylor coming. And Cameron Taylor going to lead in front of his home fans here, it looks like. And yes, he's cleared Devereaux and put car number seven in P1. Trying to lap uh, Kenny Myatt in the 70. And uh, we'll see if he's able to do so. We're on lap 53 of 250. Devereaux settling back into second, but Cameron Taylor leading in front of his home fans. It'd be quite the sight if he got his uh, first win here, that's for sure. Here's Ingrid Hadeland back in 26th place. Uh, she has really beginning to, begun to slip to the field, uh, has begun to slip backwards a little bit after uh, not being able to really make as much ground from the back of the grid as you saw. Chris Davenport is running up in 18th, and uh, Hadeland has uh, not been able to make that much of a run through the field, but the Lynx racing cars don't seem to be running as well in traffic as we've seen uh, throughout the year. This is one of the uh, slowest track, actually this is the slowest track on the calendar. Uh, the lowest average, sp uh, lowest uh, speeds we see anywhere, but here's uh, David Krikorian trying to put uh, put a lap on Chuck Johnson in the 32. Uh, Krikorian has been uh, having a very good season so far, but uh, that's if you don't count how many points he's left on the table due to uh, mishaps and mechanical failures. Uh, otherwise, I believe he would be leading the championship at this at this point. So DK definitely needs to pile more points on the board. Uh, he had another one slip away last week, but um, well, we'll have to see what he can do today. As we're now looking at Luciano Savarol, he's made his way up to fourth in car number five. He's trying to get around uh, the two Hastert cars and chase down David Krikorian. Of course, he's gotten around Saul Fischel, uh, who is uh, trying to get that place back from Marco Castaneda in the nine. Of course, Castaneda has run very well here in the uh, TM Light Series. Um, and uh, Richter, Richter Motorsports has had a, uh, put out a press release indicating that they and Lynx Racing, despite both being part of the Gessler camp, have not been sharing information and that that could be a cause for some of the tensions between those two operations that we saw last week. Uh, as you see Darian Gilliam going by Castaneda, 
Uh, it should be noted that, uh, remember that Richter Motorsports and Lynx Racing did have a pit lane brawl, and I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, those tensions that were mentioned there could be a cause of that. Uh, not being able to, not sharing information uh, despite being in the Gessler family as Tony Durbin is pitting. That does not look scheduled. Uh, that looks rather, uh, yep, they're going to call it a day uh, for the number 12 car. So Tony Durbin out, out very early. Not a nice day for him, it looks like, in car 12 as Orion uh, trying to stay on the lead lap in 23rd place. Uh, uh, getting lapped by another one of the uh, uh, local favorites here. Cameron Depping, Cameron Taylor. Here comes Ingrid Hadeland. That is for position now between two teammates. And uh, while there's not that many cars on the lead lap uh, before lap 100 has even elapsed, and we have another car hitting the pits. That's Davenport in the 17. Um, as the, That looks scheduled, actually, from Chris Davenport. And we got, oh, Lucas Grabber has got more problems. Can this boy ever catch a break? Oh, Lonnie Rollins almost into the into the line. I think he actually did scrape the side of the 34. Uh, but if uh, if uh, if Grabber can catch a break, that would be great. Um, here is Clayton Hardy, who is running in 16th. He's the last car in the lead lap. And uh, this uh, the races here at Ohio Motor Speed, we have pr have sort of proved uh, the that the number of cars in the lead lap at the end of a race is really kind of a bogus statistic and doesn't really mean a whole lot because we've seen some great racing here before, even if there's only been uh, five or six cars in the lead lap at the end, and the very short lap times uh, really contributes to that as Hardy doesn't make uh, Taylor's life that difficult, even though he very easily could have. That's Phil Purpura back there in the 21 car, and he's actually running in 17th, uh, so he's having a great race here also in that uh, 21 car. That's an independent trophy car. David Krikorian pits from fourth. That looks scheduled. They look ready for him on the pits, on the on the pit lane here. Here's Pirapira again. Now this is the kind of run that can win you and win you the Independence Trophy. Having a really strong run that puts you well inside the championship points because those uh, those spots are not those those can be very hard to get. Now here is Tom Moore trying to stay in the lead lap. He's running in 14th. Cameron Taylor really setting a blistering pace out there. Um, in that number seven car, really so, just tearing through the field. He's going to put a more analytic lap down. Here's Woodard in the 41, running in 12th. That's Eklund right in front of him. And, of course, the uh, the 87 and not, and 711 uh, cars up there are also a lap down as uh, Woodard's going to have to surrender that. Uh, Eklund really does not want to be put one lap down, it looks like, in that 11 car. She's uh, not really bottled the reason for bottling the, the field being bottled up this much, but she's definitely, uh, no, she's going to have to let that one go. Uh, Cameron Taylor really flying out there and setting an absolutely torrid pace, but he's going to bring it in. Taylor pits the seven car, and we've got uh, Lonnie Rollins here in the 980 car. We're looking at, he's running up in 20th. Uh, Lonnie Rollins trying to catch that is, oh no, we got one. That's one up in smoke. Rollins up suddenly. He's going to pull that car off the track. Uh, we're going to wait and see to hear anything from track observers, but if you're an independent trophy car, what you don't want is an early retirement. Now we're looking back here at Cameron Taylor as he brings the seven in. Let's see if uh, nothing, nothing, in, nothing overly dramatic there at that pit lane entry. Uh, maybe some, maybe some uh, observers thought he entered too quickly, but oh, that is Daniel Sharp. Part of the brakes to gain a little bit of t as much time as he can in pit entry, uh, but almost in the back of Adrian Devereaux, who was. Uh, now running effectively second. Now uh, we're going to see where Devereaux comes out, hopefully, in that uh, 74 car. There is Orion pitting. Get Darren Gilliam in. He's having a great day today uh, in this 35 car. We've had a lot of uh, seemingly random or upset winners here at the Ohio Motor Speedway. Uh, Darren Gilliam hoping to add his name to that list. Fischl in the eight uh, had the lead briefly. He's coming in. David Krikorian was... Uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see how everyone cycles out, but Fischl in, in car number eight. He's having a good day also, keeping himself in contention. Of course, Fischl, uh, eight top tens so far this year. Absolutely astounding season for the points leader so far. Oh, no! Bliskin and Kuznetsov and make contact. That's going to bring out a caution during the middle of the pit cycle. Oh, boy, where have we seen this? As Kuznetsov gets the 15 underway, and that's, the prob that's one of the problems here that props up so often. Eklund was in the pit lane when the yellow came out. And that's that's going to be uh, well, I think she's going to still be on the lead lap, I think. Uh, just barely. 
Arto Kakinen had not pitted yet in the uh, number one car, bringing it in. The, the Finn having a pretty good day so far. He's had some success here in the past. Tom Moore in car number four is really going to be a big beneficiary. Okay, as we see Fischl in the eight team, not um, a little bit of confusion over where everyone's supposed to be lining up. Nothing new there, uh, especially given events in Minnesota. But uh, we'll see where everyone... Uh, looks like the team has clarified that for him, that he is indeed the last car on the lead lap, and that Tom Moore uh, is going to be leading the race because of, because Tom Moore was also like uh, was in the pit lane when the uh, yellow was out. Now, there's a couple other cars that were had some similar luck. Gaspar D'Souza, Phil Purpura, uh, and there's, uh, I think that's Alenic and Ashby back there in the uh, 55 car. So there's the running order on the left. Look for where your favorite driver is running. The field is rather jumbled up because the yellow came out during the middle of the pit cycle. Adrian, you'll notice that Adrian Devereux, Liv Eklund, Saul Fischl are directly in front of the race leader. They are on the tail end of the lead lap. So we're going to have to see how this all pans out. There we go. Green is out. Moore gets a good getaway. Looking, he's going to be looking for a challenge from that red and red and black and blue number one of Arto Kekkonen and Phil Purpura. And there is Gaspar D'Souza in the 20. He's making a move, made a move to the inside. Tony Long's in trouble in the 191. Is he going to be able to get back to the pits on his own? Looks like he is. Here's D'Souza in the 20 car, who's also had a pretty terrible year. But this is a really good run for the Ortega Motorsports Bunch. And especially in a weekend where they have been under the microscope by the officials for uh, uh, those, quali those incidents in qualifying. Here is Olenek now. Really making a move, and he's Delenic is made him gotten himself into the lead around the four. Tom Moore got stuck on the outside. Moved Joe Olenek to P1. He's got a pretty big fan base here as well. As we've seen some of these big 23 flags. Fischl really running Davenport up the track. Saw Fischl nearly putting Chris Davenport into the wall. And that is gonna draw, that's definitely gonna draw the Californian's ire. Well, as uh, here is David Krikorian on the inside. There is yep. I was waiting for that. I think most of us were. Um, here is a Yevgeny Kuznetsov. Despite bringing that yellow out, uh, he is running up in third. So that's that, that yellow that he brought out it's actually really helped him out. I don't think that wasn't on purpose by Kuznetsov. He's, that's just uh, being lucky, but or unlucky because I don't think that car is handling all too well. And he's got he has Tom Moore all over him like a bad smell. Gaspar D'Souza coming into the pits. Is that a puncture? Looks like it might be. That's a huge disappointment for Gaspar D'Souza, who, who seemingly cannot have anything go his way this season. And um, that's going to be very that's going to be a very bitter pill for him to swallow unless he can recover from that. Uh, but we'll see. He's good. Got a ways to go. Scott Bates entering the pits as well in the six. Looks like similar reasoning. So there's definitely some debris left on the track. And here is uh, we're looking at Olenek in the 23 car, who's trying to put a lap on Connor Friel. Or another lap on Connor Friel. And uh, here's Bates in the six, who is uh, going to be tumbling down the running order. The Oklahoma not having a good week so far. Now here is Liv Eklund in the 11, running uh, in 12th. Now we mentioned a relationship between uh, Richter Motorsports and Lynx Racing souring. Lynx Racing has put that timetable much earlier than Richter Motorsports has, and has said Richter has not been sharing with them ever since uh, late in 2018. And um, Richter Motorsports, of course, says Lynx has not been sharing information with them uh, starting in January, and they're beginning to wonder what's been going on with Lynx Racing uh, and uh, why they're not sharing information. Uh, I'm very curious to see how, how uh, Gessler themselves is going to be uh, uh, reacting to that, and we're looking at Phil Pierpira and Tom Moore, who, by the way, are battling for second. Only one Independence Trophy car has ever won a Master Cup Series race. That being the lone win for Jose Luis Martinez, and that is to date his only win. And here is the uh, tw the 21 car of uh, Pure Pure. If he's able to hang on to a top 10 result here, that will be a gift to his independent uh, to him winning the Independence Trophy practically, unless something bizarre happens. But we've seen the bizarre happen before with the Independence Trophy, which has often come down to the wire. Here is Brandon Laroe in the uh, 25 car, who's not exactly uh, helping anyone but himself out. Uh, getting in the way of Tom Moore and Purpura doing uh, battle for second. 
but I think he's just trying to keep that car off the wall because uh, the road doesn't seem to have too much confidence in that uh, KLTV car because Nyetsov is in with the 15. I wonder if that's scheduled. It looks like it might be. That's a brave strategy call there, but we'll see what's going on there with, uh, the, with the 15 bunch. Devereaux is in this uh, on lap 136. So Adrian Devereaux now brings the 74 in. And I see Daniel Lechleiter is in. A couple other cars have pitted. Uh, these are, uh, the, that's a gamble I'm not sure if I would take or not. Laro coming out, the Souza coming in. Gaspar de Souza nearly into the back of the 87. Uh, oh boy, as Joe Olenek pits the 23 as well. So the leader is in. Lap 141. There is Castaneda in car number nine. He is also pitting the Asira car. I saw Greg Woodard in as well. There's Pira Pira. 15 car in again? Because Nietzsche is pitting is pitted again, so there's definitely has to be something wrong. Oh no, 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 no! That's is that an that could be an unsafe release. That is gonna be a post-race investigation, I believe. That uh, Lennox was released into the path of Packer Carroll, who could not have had any chance to avoid him. Tom Morris not, has not pitted yet in car number four. Uh, now he is, he's coming in. Tom Moore, one of the last cars to pit. This race really sort of flying by or on lap 146 by my count. As here is Greg Woodard in car 41, uh, who uh, we thought and we thought may have uh, also entered the uh, entered pit lane a bit too quickly. Uh, looks like he's been cleared of a pit speeding violation. Oh, that's Yatzer on his inside. Craig Yatzer washes up the apron into Woodard and they're both into the wall. That's going to bring the yellow out. Yellow out. The 81 is has uh, spun it on track. Looked like he just, uh, after he pulled it onto the racetrack, he lost the front end and got into the side of the 41, put them both in the wall. That was a bit over exuberant from Yonser, and uh, here is Fischl, who is uh, left. He's already pitted, and Fischl believes he's on the lead lap now. Ryan, of the Ryan that you see mentioned there is Ryan Reinhardt, the race director. And uh, Saul Fischl apparently still very bitter, even though uh, the decision, the decision uh, that ha at Minnesota uh, went uh, their way. Here is Liv Eklund in the 11. She is one of only two cars being shown on the lead lap, and she's going to be scored. She's being scored in second right now. Now we're going to look and see when that yellow came out. Looking at Tom Moore in the in car number four. There's the yellow right as he pitted. We're going to we're looking off. We're looking for Saul Fischl's car. See if that's going to be the case. Because if we see Fischl there, then Fischl will have a case for him being, for him supposed to be being scored as the race leader. I don't even see the 11 car there. No, Tom Moore should be the race leader in car four. There's Cooper that went by. Let's see if we can see Fischl here. Look on the left side. That's a white and blue car. That That's Grabert, though. Don't see him yet. There's Cameron Taylor, and I'm not quite sure where officials getting that argument, but there's Eklund. Going to be restarting at the front of the field. Will be the last car in the lead lap, and Tom will have, means that Tom Moore has effectively put a lap on the field with strategy. Now this is what this is where this could get rather interesting because you see multiple cars many laps down. Now why on earth are official and uh, that's interesting. Third and fourth place, you see there's Sharp and Fischl are on the outside lane on this restart. Despite both, those two cars are one lap down. Now they're arguing that the that the four and the 11 have been scored one lap erroneously and that there should be four on the lead lap, but Fischl and the 24 car are one lap down. They should not be, if they should not have restarted in the outside lane in the first place. Oh, Ackland really sliding that car sideways. We got some controversy here now because you have two cars that restarted in the wrong lane. In official and... Oh. Well then. That's rare that we see or that we're privy to that as it looks like race control is looking at it. There's official uh, trying to hold off Daniel Sharp. Now, if this is overturned, then that's going to put Fischl in second and Sharp in third and Eklund in fourth. So this has thrown scoring into a huge mess that we didn't really need another one of, So, especially now. But as you see, there's Ingrid Hadeland holding up Tom Moore. She's fighting for position, I believe. 
but uh, she's uh, additionally she's helping teammate Liv Eklund really begin to stretch a, a pull away from Tom Moore and hopefully get herself back in the race if uh, we get another yellow. Uh, but we see uh, Eklund beginning to Eklund trying to stretch away. We got three wide here. That's uh, Sharp in the 24 car, who, by the way, this is his second Master Cup start. Daniel Sharp having an unbelievable run here so far. Really made the most of strategy here to put himself this high up. But uh, you do wonder whether or not, well, uh, you do wonder whether or not that that should even be the case. Here is car number two. That's Ian Cooper. They're running up in sixth place, which they were well out of it beforehand. But Cooper has uh, seized this opportunity with both hands, and they're running well above where they normally run. We've seen Cooper, one of the more mercurial talents on the grid, have a couple of really strong runs every season, and um, then the rest of it just sort of be out to lunch. Seem oh, okay. Saul Fischel has just been promoted to second by uh, race control uh, right there. So there you have it. I didn't see where uh, scoring went wrong, but apparently they saw something that I didn't. All right then. Joe Lenick in car number 23 is uh, in the pits. He pits from fifth as uh, there is, there's Tom Moore in the four. Um, yeah, that's, that's not going to affect Tom Moore's position. He is still leading the race quite comfortably over Saul Fischl. Has almost half a lap lead on him already because Fischl is stuck in traffic in uh, that car number eight. And uh, while he does have Ingrid Hadeland in front of him, uh, Hadeland is not exactly holding him up as uh, that much. Now here is Sharp in the 24 car. That is uh, Davenport and Sovereil who are racing each other. And that is Elena coming out of the pit lane. Elena hits the paint into the side here, into the side of the 24. That's another yellow. And that is Daniel Sharp into the wall. If he's able to get it back going, he's gonna be able to stay on the lead lap. It looks like Eklund has just been handed a lifeline. So we have four cars on the lead lap and they're all gonna be nose to tail, looks like on this restart. So that should be fun. Uh, unless Daniel Sharp pits for, uh, to repair all that damage on that car, which I don't know why you, oh no, Hardy's gone up in smoke. Oh, Clayton Hardy was having a pretty good run up until now. Hopefully we'll be, hopefully we'll see more of him in the future, the uh, the Cherokee driver had a great showing here in front of the closest thing he's gonna get to a home race. Here is the running order on the left. Moore, Fischl, Sharp, who did not pit under that yellow, surprisingly, and Liv Eklund in fourth. Keep an eye out for Phil Purpura in sixth and Ike Durbin in 16th. They're both looking for really good results today if everything holds as is. As Tom Moore, very late green flag there, gets a good launch away from the line. That's Marco Castaneda on the inside, who's running 11th. Uh, Castaneda is two laps down, now only one lap down. Uh, Moore is going to let him go, but he's going to try to get to the inside. And uh, Greg Woodard doesn't really want to see that because Moore is trying to, uh, or Moore is in between Woodard and uh, the car that he's chasing. As Fischl is, gets to the inside as well in car number eight, Daniel Sharp holding up Eklund in the back. Woodard peels off in the 41. Greg Woodard, who was running in 12th, that is, they just pulled the uh, rear panel off that car. And they just sent him back out there, so we're going to have to see how that develops. But that's rather costly for Woodard. He must have been told to pull in. Here is the Daniel Sharp, car number 24. That is Griffith right behind him. Sharp is all over the racetrack right now in this 24 car. Way, way wide. Acklin trying to get on the inside of him. And there is Gilliam in the 35. That's three wide. The 24 really squeezing him down a bit. And uh, Gilliam and Eklund making it stick. No, not a lot of experience just between those three. Not even a full season's worth of experience. Sharp way deep into turn one. All over the place in this 24 car. And he's, pe whoa, pitting from the outside. That's something they tell you not to do. Uh, that's for sure. That was reckless pitting from that far out. As a Sharp, he's made a stop. He's a couple laps down. Oh, he's into Ike Durbin. And into the wall, he goes along with Connor Friel. And that's gonna bring out another yellow. And that, that glowing endorsement there by Chris Davenport. But I hardly think he's gonna be alone in those sentiments. Uh, here is on board Ike Durbin. 
Well, yeah, that's his teammate directly in front of him. The 24 emerges onto the racing line and then suddenly stops. And Ike Durbin just has no opportunity to really avoid him, even though he lifted off rather early. Daniel Sharp just, that was, that was a really big mistake on his part. You can't just pull in front of cars like that. And uh, especially that uh, involved both the Team Timothy cars. And that radio message there you saw, it's not uncommon for race control to tell drivers that have had a series of incidents, whether on or off track, to keep them from uh, running into each other again. As uh, you see, Tom Moore got a really good restart there. Here is Fischl trying to keep Eklund behind him. Uh, Eklund in that 11 car. Uh, we haven't heard of the uh, race control give any uh, threats that harsh uh, before, not in a long time. Uh, but there have been some rather violent rivalries in the series in the past. Uh, as Fischl trying to hang on um, to second, but that's Woodard going to go by him. Now, Woodard not for position. The car he's worried about is that yellow, red, and blue car directly behind him on the outside line. Tom Moore, in the meantime, has pulled away almost a quarter, almost a third of a lap lead already. Tom Moore is sort of in his own zip code. This is, looks like the Tom Moore we saw in Los Angeles. He is one of the better short track drivers in the series, if not the best at the moment. And uh, he spent most of his career in very subpar machinery, but even here at the Ohio Motor Speedway, he has pulled some absolutely magical drives. Uh, he is uh, not just in race trim, but in qualifying trim as well, as Eklund uh, trying to get around Griffith. She's slowing down, it looks like. She's uh, lost a little bit of pace, uh, it looks like, but she's getting mired back in traffic. Now here is Philip Pura, who's running in eighth. Now, this is an unbelievable run if you're an Independence Trophy contender. This is what wins you the Independence Trophy, seizing big results like this when you need them the most. Carter Fitzgerald in car number 60, another driver with very limited experience in the series, but she's running up in ninth, and uh, Fitzy having a very strong run so far in that car number 60, having a very good effort. Matthews Motorsports should really uh, uh, sort of be holding their head high with this discovery because Fitzgerald is having a fantastic drive so far. And here's Cooper doing battle with Arto Kekkonen for sixth place. Now they're having a really good run so far because uh, as I mentioned before, Cooper has had, uh, their whole career has been very mercurial. A couple of good results, a lot of very mediocre ones, but they're seizing this one with both hands. Even though they did just lose sixth, this is still a really good run for them. Here is Fischl. Uh, who appears to have lost ground to Eklund now. Eklund has begun to reel him in a little bit. Uh, we're going to see if she's able to make uh, make a move here cleanly. Fischl keeping up, keeping his nose clean. Eklund doing likewise. She's also uh, kept her kept that car very clean. Eklund very, very uh, kind to machinery that we've seen in her uh, Master Cup career so far, which very un very unusual for a rookie. Uh, official, and uh, you can say the same for her as well, but Official's got uh, some rather worn out machines, it seems like, at the end of races. But that is a skill that usually forms with experience as he begins to pull away from Eklund. Uh, as car number eight is having a very good run today. Official is having an, uh, also a very good rookie campaign. I mentioned he has eight top tens entering today. Oh, Eklund is pitting the car number 11. Oh no, she was having such a good run. This was a podium run for the Swede. And uh, that's going to be a, oh, that's not good. Put water in it and send it, put water in that car and send it back out. And that looks like that's going to be what they're doing with car number 11. But that definitely not a scheduled stop. But uh, Fischl, I mentioned, he has eight top tens uh, so far this year. He looks like he's on track for nine and he is leading the championship. Uh, but Tom Moore in this four car is definitely beginning to make himself look like a championship threat with drives like this. He has Fischl nowhere near him right now. He is about two tenths up on any other car on track right now, and he's just pulled away. Tim Ruiz in car 33, we mentioned earlier, he's got some new sponsorship, could be headed his way. This car could be uh, many different colors next time we see him. But uh, Ruiz running up in 12th. This is another, another very strong rookie driver that we've seen in this series. Very good rookie class this year. Probably the best we've seen in a very long time. Um, and Chris Davenport here running in car 17. He's a lap down in third place. Uh, Chris Davenport uh, has, driven, uh, has driven his way through the field. And I think he was able to get himself in position for this strict, uh, mostly in the first 25 laps or so. 
Uh, Connor Friel in Carter 68, we're seeing him running here in 34th place. Uh, doing battle with Zach Webster, Connor Friel. There's been some doubts about uh, his position and his status in this team. Uh, but given the amount of misfortune he's run into, um, I think it's a little unfair on him. But we could be seeing a driver change with car 68 again. Hopefully this time uh, it's not. It's uh, for better reasons. As uh, Carter Fitzgerald still hanging on to that top 10 run she's got going in that 60 car. Chrissy O'Ryan in car number 80. Solid points day for her. She ran decently well in the uh, TM Lights race. Uh, scored points in that race. Oh, oh, slow. O'Ryan oh, slowing and she's pitting. Is this a similar problem? Could be. Uh, that could be. Well, Ingrid Hadeland appears to be the only uh, one of the Lynx Racing drivers to have not had problems with uh, overheating, it looks like. Uh, Hadeland running in 22nd place. Uh, just out of the points and here's someone who's going to be grinning from ear to ear as we've seen uh, quite a bit from him actually is uh, Darian Gilliam in car number 35 running up in 10th. He's a couple laps down but the top 10's the top 10 doesn't matter how far back you are on paper. This is still a great result for him. Uh, that's Davenport directly behind him but uh, they're not on the same lap. Uh, Darian Gilliam start to his Master Cup career has gone exceptionally well and oh, we've got problems. That's Ashby on the inside in the 55. Veteran of the series, Ashby, she looks like she's gonna be able to get that car back to the pits. But uh, Puncture looks like on the 55, uh, just missed pit in. Here's Joe Atlantic and uh, he's got a lot of support here and it looks like he might be able in, looks like he's gonna be uh, taking home some points today, a pair of them, if this result holds for car 23. Uh, but Joe Atlantic on the inside of Arto Kekkonen. That is a battle for position he's interrupting. Arto Kekkonen and Cameron Taylor are in battle, are running each other for position. Now here's Anthony Griffith in the Bum and Beaver Brewery, car number 07, uh, holding up Cameron Taylor a bit. Of course, the, uh, the track sponsor is also the uh, main sponsor on this 07 car, Griffith from the area. Uh, he's having, he's had a very solid run. The veteran driver has been mostly in the FARC series is where he's had the most uh, luck so far. Um, but he's having a good solid run in 11th place. Now there is Cameron Taylor who is trying to hold off Arto Kekkonen for fourth. Uh, Joe Lenick in the 23 is also, uh, bat uh, I think is doing battle with uh, the, uh, the 07 car. So, oh, inside, Arto throws it in deep. These cars are both a lap down, but this is a great battle for position here that we're witnessing Kekkonen uh, the Finn is really taken to short track racing a lot better than I think anyone really would have thought. But uh, Cameron Taylor really didn't have much of a choice to bail out. But uh, Tom Moore in this car number four, as I mentioned many times, has really just kind of been in his own zip code. He's in his own mode. No one has been close to him late in the race on pace alone. This is rather remarkable. We haven't seen something like this in a while. Uh, there he is on the inside of car number 60. That is uh, Carter Fitzgerald. This is going to take the white flag. One lap to go for Tom Moore. He's rather overlooked by most of the field. Before this, before this season, when Volpe picked him up, it was a bit of a surprise that Volpe signed him to replace Leonid Roderick. However, that decision's looking rather smart because Tom Moore has taken win number two in car number four. Great drive for Tom Moore, cementing his position as one of the top stars in the series. Saul Fischel in second was the only other car on the lead lap. Chris Davenport completed the podium in a great drive from behind for car 17. Arto Kekkonen and Cameron Taylor complete the top five. Cooper held on to sixth, Castaneda seventh. Phil Purpura, an independent trophy car in the top 10. That's an amazing run there for car 21. Fitzgerald held on to ninth and Darian Gilliam completed the top 10, just beating out Anthony Griffith. Eklund still recovered to finish in 12th, Ruiz 13th. Savarol and Pliskin were clearly looking for more. They had the pace, but not the luck. Gaspar de Souza, despite some of his issues, still scored some points today in a good run for the Portuguese driver. Daniel Sharp might be the least popular driver in the garage right about now. However, he does have six points to his name. Joe Lennox secured four points for 18th. Ike Durbin and Alessandro Rossini complete the points finishers. We very nearly had two independent trophy cars in the top 20 because Richard Scott came home 21st. The difference between 20th and 21st is much more significant for independent trophy cars than it is for anyone else.
While we're on that topic, let's have a look to see what impact this will have on the Independence Trophy. Just to emphasize how big of a deal it is that Pirpira finished 8th today. If he finishes 36th in his next two Independence Trophy starts, he will be leading the Independence Trophy by a single point. That doesn't mean he should be complacent, and someone with his level of experience, albeit not at this level, I don't think he will be. But we've seen some wild finishes to the Independence Trophy before, so don't say it's over just yet. Especially when Richard Scott and Maximus Racing are also still in the hunt. Remember, Maximus Racing scaled back to running just the Independence Trophy and sold their full-time spot sort of at the last minute. It seems to be working out okay for them so far. Before we close out, let's have one look at the Drivers' Championship, and Saul Fischl's lead over the rest of the field is extending. However, Chris Davenport is staying in touch with them. And it's rather frightening to see that you have three rookies in the top ten, all with a pretty reasonable look at the championship. Fischl already has the lead. Eklund is there in fourth. Castaneda back in eighth. All of them could still win the title. However, Fischl's lead, it's looking rather imperious, especially given that he's looked rock solid so far this year. Davenport and Devereaux are both in the hunt. Tom Moore, with his uh, win today, is looking very, very strong there, fifth in the championship. Cameron Taylor, Kurt Pliskin, Ingrid Hadland, and Arto Kekkonen, the reigning champion, should not be counted out as well. Ryan Matthews in the 06 car is looking like a bit of an outside contender at this rate. He's going to have to start getting some bigger results. However, what he has so far, that's a pretty good sign for things to come. Joe Olenek running in 12th. If Hot as Walter Racing is able to turn the elite pace shown by David Krikorin and Joe Olenek into some results, then I think they'll actually become contenders for the championship. But as things stand, then it doesn't look very good for either of them. If Black Diamond Racing's Luciano Savarol and Zelda Ashby can actually have some better results more regularly, then I think they could become contenders as well. Greg Woodard is another man who's left a lot of points on the table, whether it be a cause of mechanical failures or unforced errors. Alessandro Rossini and Scott Bates are probably a little too far back to have a serious run at the championship. However, both of them are due for a big result sometime soon. And that sometime soon could be at the place where those two ran 1-2 back in 2017 at Road America at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, which will be playing host to the TM Master Cup Series the next time the series is in action. If you'd like to watch some previous events in the series, check out this list over here. Or check out these videos from friends of the show. Or if you'd like to be social, join the Discord.